G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, an update on the Foxtech FPV Screamer, the one that I had quite a few troubles with out of the box. And I've taken it apart, as you can see, taken off the, the top plate, that's come off, and as, as I say, these plates are really small, wibbly wobbly, but, ah, you know, it's built for lightness. Now looking inside, I found, as I suspected, that the, the video wire had come off the camera. As you can see there, that's just come right off. So I've taken the camera out, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, the camera itself, there's no plug on the back, and this is hardwired into the camera, and it looks, looking closely at the end of the video lead, it appears as if it's ripped a bit of the circuit board off, so I think this camera is just unserviceable, because also it has been glued in to a little, this little mount here, and this, you know, having been glued in, that glue seems quite hard, I don't know what they used, yeah, so I'm not probably not going to be able to get that out, so this camera and mount we just have to discard that, which is a bit unfortunate. But fortunately, I have one of these. Look at this, this is a diatone miniature camera. In fact, it looks almost identical to the one that is inside this mount. Let me get them both out so you can see them side by side. I mean, see that? It's very, very similar indeed. So I'm gonna use this camera. Now I was going to use, I thought, well, I'll just throw an HS1177 in there or a run cam swallow or something like that. Unfortunately, there's not enough room between these plates, these pillars are too short to fit a, to fit a full size HS117 in there and give it any tilt. It'll fit in, but you can't tilt it because it hits the top plate. And although this probably doesn't need much in the way of tilt because it is the pentacopter, uh, nevertheless, you want to be able to fly it as a normal quadcopter too. So you would want some tilt to deal with the, you know, the angle you get in when you're flying without the thrust motor. So I'm going to put that little diatone camera in there, see how we get on now. Also. FPV transmitter still works, so I'm going to mount this in, on the side, run a coaxial cable to a separate SMA connector on the on the frame, and you know I I was a bit down when I uh, when I had my first flight with this thing because it just went into the ground and flopped around like a funky chicken, but I'm a lot more up now because I've had a look at how it's been built, and although the fiberglass or sorry the carbon is very thin, they've been clever. They've used three screws to hold these back legs on. So when you take the top plate off, these don't. I was worried these are going to fall off and flop around, make a really hard thing to work with on the bench. So that's good. Now the Radio Link receiver, uh, it's quite ironic. The reason that this wire got pulled off the camera was because the the wires were too short. They were just a bit um, scroogey on the wire length. So when this little receiver, which was just flopping around there, moved forward, I think probably in shipping from China, it ripped that wire off the board. But they've used, they've left the wires for the um, signals to the flight controller inordinately long. So they skimped on the video wires, but they really didn't bother to trim down the signal wires from the receiver to the flight controller. That's a bit of a shame, because um, it just means mess in there, signal cross talk and all sorts of crap. So yeah, I will probably shorten up these wires quite a bit. I, I was going to use the FreeSky S-Bus receiver and or the X, what is it, XRS, XSR, that's the one, XSR. But I thought I'm going to have a go at fixing up that radio link transmitter. What I think has happened is that the, the wiper where it joins onto the pot shaft has got a bit of slop in it. So I'm going to go in there and just put a bit of CA in it and see if that'll fix it. If it does, I'll continue to use the radio link receiver. But, but as you can see, there's separate channel wires for each channel here. They're using PWM. I'm going to use it in S-Bus mode, run it through the flight controller. Then I can do some clever mixing if I want to and take the um, ESC outputs off there and use them. Uh, so you can maybe I can mix in the thrust with the lift and things like that. Have a play around. A lot of potential there for experimentation and fun, because fun is the big thing, of course. So that's pretty much it. Um, it is probably going to take me another week or two to get this going, but I am going to get it going because I really love the potential of this thing. I'm still in love with it as a concept. And I, as I say, I just think that maybe Fu rushed this one out to get it to me, which is nice of him, but just missed out on some of the details like, you know, cut this wire a little bit short and just didn't bother checking so that was the end of the video signal um, we'll see what happens so yeah I'm still really in love with this thing I think once I get it going it's going to fly really great looking at the videos that Foo's put up of some of the ones they've had flying at Foxtech I think this is I can't wait to do some power loops with this thing it will do the most insane power loops ever I'm pretty sure so I'm going to hit a lot of stuff and the frame may get broken, but I'm going to have fun doing it. So there you go. Stay tuned. This will be an ongoing project and I'll keep you up to date. And it's also a good chance to review this diatone camera, I suppose. This, as I say, this came from Hobby King. Thank you, Hobby King, for sending this because it has saved this project. I wouldn't have a camera otherwise. A bit of an update here. I managed to get that little camera out of its plastic 
frame, the little plastic mount thing here, see that? It was only held in with kind of a, a rubber, a bit like the, the um, what is it, the liquid tape stuff. So I managed to get it out and you can see down here that the, it is actually, it is a Diatone camera, or the same camera that's being sold by Diatone, albeit without the microphone. So this is really great because it means I can hopefully repair this camera now. I noticed that the little trace for the uh, video has been pulled right off the board. You can see it poking up there. I'm going to have to be very careful about how I do this, but I'm going to have to try and affix that back to the board and solder a wire to it. It's going to be a bit of a tricky job. If you use some very fine wire, I'll try and repair it. Remember, of course, this has to be a reliable repair. Otherwise, if it fails in flight, you're in big trouble when you're flying FPV. One thing I did notice, though, the wires on the unit from Foxtech have a silicon insulation, which is nice and flexible. The ones that came from the Hobby King, on the, on the Diatone camera from Hobby King, are PVC and already just a couple of flexes, they've nearly broken off the board down here because it puts all the flex on that little area where the solder wicks into the wire. So that's really bad. If you're buying one of these cameras from Hobby King, the Diatone camera, first thing to do, take those wires off, put some silicon wires on or that will break. But Having said that, there should have been some physical reinforcement on these wires anyway. I'm going to put a big glob of epoxy on there to take the stress off the wires where they join onto the board. It's really bad news. So I will extend out all the wires with new fresh silicon wires. And if I can, I will reconnect the video signal to that little copper land, that's the little piece of copper circuit that's poking up in the air. You can see when it got pulled off, it ripped that off the circuit board itself, off the fiberglass board. So... That's good news. I think I'll have a go at that now and see how we get on. Okay, I've encountered a bit of a problem. I don't think I'm going to be able to solder to that little trace. It's just too frail. It's too small. It's just not going to work. So what do you do? Um, there's the little trace in there. You can see it wanders off under this integrated circuit. And I've had this problem a few times before with other things and I've been servicing electronics. And when you lose a trace like that, what do you do? Uh, um, I'll tell you what you do. You could unsolder this IC and see where the trace ended up. But if you've got access to that trace, if you wanted to scrape a bit of copper off there, then you can look for other parts on the circuit board where there's actually uh, that trace reappears because it's obviously connected to other parts of the circuit. Now, I'm not going to do it on this one because I won't, I'll have to scrape off the little copper trace. But what I can do, what I can do is use this one, the other diatome, which is uh, exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I've got my multimeter. I will set it to the beep function but normally you set, set it to ohms don't set it to beep but I'm going to set it to beep because I've already measured it out and I know that when it beeps it is zero ohms some of these continuity testers they will beep on less than or on more than zero ohms so you can't rely on them so if you want to be sure you've got to actually set it to the ohms reading and if I can get this back into shot set it to the ohms reading and make sure you're getting zero ohms and not like 10 ohms or something because that would be a little bit, you could be going through a resistor, you might be on the wrong side of the board. This is really hard to do because these little wires here are just not the, the plastic. Look at that PVC coating, it's a real pain in the backside. So I have metered through the board before and I found that on this side of this diode, if I can get the, am I connected on that side? Actually, where are we? Right, the beep's working. Let's see if I can go through. Sorry about this, is all a bit bodge because I've only got one pair of hands. And I think on this side, it's a capacitor or a diode. I haven't actually checked yet. Come on. Over here. I'm doing this through the camera too, which is really hard. Here we go. So you notice it's a capacitor. On this side of that capacitor, we have a beep. So that means that that yellow pad here is connected to there. In fact, I could I'd put the meter on the pad, but it's too hard with one hand. So here we go. We can actually run a wire. Therefore, on the faulty camera, I can run a little wire from... Let me get this around a little wire from there, which is actually not too hard to solder to, even though I'm shaky and old, solder wire from there to the, out to the video lead. So I can save, I can rescue this camera by soldering a wire on there, even though this piece here has been completely ripped off the board, and this is simply too small to get a reliable connection on. As you can see, it's going to break off shortly anyway. So yeah, let's see if we can rescue the camera. Uh, never give up with electronics, is usually a way to get around things. So yep, I will get my finest tip soldering iron out, Try and solder a wire on there, and of course then I'll make sure it's supported with hot glue or epoxy so it's not going to rip off. If we don't want the same problem occurring again, excuse my dirty hands, I've been working hard. Let's give it a go and see what happens. There we go, she ain't pretty, but she'll do the job. It's soldered onto the edge of that capacitor up there, and uh, yeah, I've also reinforced the 
wires down there with a bit of hot snot as well. So there should be no stress on the, or less stress on those wires, far less likely to fail. And now we've got to see if I can squeeze it back into its little case. That'll be another bit of a challenge. Here we go again. She ain't pretty, but I think she'll work. This seems to be lined up okay. That's not too bad. Um, nearly finished for today, so I'll take this home, render up this video so you can have a look. See, yeah, it's coming together well. We might get this thing back in the air sooner than I thought. As you see, all three wires coming out there. And so I will use this camera on the, providing it works, haven't tested it yet, but if it works, I'll use it on the Screamer 250. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.